Hi, Jason. Welcome to the show. Hi, Bonnie. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, Jason, uh, where do you get your inspiration from? Um, I guess I would have to say mainly my inspiration is derived from um, the natural world and the world I have around me, my relationship to, um, to the world in which I live, you know. Um, uh, animals play a huge part in the work that I do. Um, I've got a strong love and connection and um, empathy for animals. Um, and I think, wholly speaking, that we are actually, they, they play a larger role in our life um, than we give them credit for, I think. Um, there's a quote that sort of comes to mind that if, if, um, if people are on this earth without animals, we would die of a loneliness of spirit, you know, and I really, I really feel that to be true, you know, if I don't have animals around me, I sort of, I do feel uh, um, that something's missing. And I, I like, um, I'm moved by certain times and moods of, of the day and of the weather. And um, these are kind of little things that stay with me, you know, like a, a storm will happen or a cloud will come in and um, a certain shifting of light or something like that. And it, it can um, prompt me to want to follow it and put it down, so to speak, and um, use it as a springboard. Everything that I see is really just a springboard in, into another direction or another another pathway, you know. I don't, generally speaking, I don't have a set uh, notion or a clear vision of what it is that I want to do or set out to do. I allow it to um, unfold along the way. And I, for me, that's what makes it exciting. And also, um, that's what feeds me. That's what gives me... Um, that's what gives me... Uh, a certain connection that is beyond anything else that I've known, really. Um, you know, I think that's the beauty of art. You sort of gift things to people, but I'm gifted as well. I get the gifts because I get the messages from from some of the work that I do. You know, it's, it's quite amazing how certain things will come together sometimes entirely by accident or, you know, by sort of something greater than yourself and at the end of it, you know, something will hit you and be like, oh my God, that sort of all comes together and ties in perfectly and I had actually no intention to do that and, you know, certain people will look at things like, wow, how did you do that and put that together and it's like, well, it's actually just chance, you know, a lot of it is just sort of an accident and it's like, oh, that worked really well, beautiful, you know. And so, Jason, what do you see um, as the role of art and specifically visionary art? Um, I've always actually, I've seen, I've always seen art, for me, it's, it's really important. Um, it's always been important to me because it's really been my means of uh, expressing myself, you know. When I was young and growing up, I wasn't actually, I'm not a talker, I'm not actually quite, I'm not very vocal, I'm quite quiet and reserved and um, really happy to be around animals and nature and not in crowds and that kind of a thing. And so a lot of people will sort of see me as being quiet and you know, quite reserved, and so my art for me, I think, shows people of a whole other side of me that otherwise wouldn't wouldn't have an. Um, but I, I do think that it's really poignant these days for people to be looking um, within. Um, this is what my art is about. It's about my own inner story and the things that inspire me and. Um, have power for me, and I think I see it anyway. Is it? It's quite an important 
thing now more than ever as we're drawn out of ourselves into the external world more and more into the world of material possessions and things and TV and and um, an ego and keeping up with the Joneses sure and having 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 our thinking done for us you know we're sort of lo losing that capacity I think to really um, feel things out for ourselves you know it happens quite often as well I don't know I'm sure you would find it as well a lot of people want to hear a story about my work they want me to tell them about it and whilst I can see the validity in that and it's fair enough sometimes also I'm like well what what does what do you get from it you know because I know what it does for me and I know my journey with it but um, you know I'm sort of giving you the the opportunity to arrive at something personal for yourself what does it do what do you get out of it you know if something great if nothing fine but I don't think always every time that um, people need to be told exactly what's going on and well this is that we're very um we've, we've become very analytical and very I'm not that way inclined I'm actually quite spontaneous and I, you know float through and just happen and I allow that and enjoy that you know? I don't set out to construct things and push them into pictures I, I really allow them to happen but um but I think, yeah, it's really important that um, people these days are given the windows that, that visionary art can provide to look a little deeper into themselves and into what's going on within them. Um, the realms of the imagination, the realms of spirit, the realms of energy um, that we are all created and made up of, you know, this is the beautiful thing for me is that I I suppose I paint the way I see things and I see things as all connected and um, I don't think see things as separate you know going back to the animal thing I see them I see them exactly the same as us I, I don't see them as different the same with anything really yeah because um, it's the same spirit of the divine looking yeah. out from behind their eyes that's that's the way I said if something is alive it has yeah. the spark of divine within it that's yeah. otherwise it wouldn't be alive that's Absolutely. just m my perception on it and also what you were saying about before by not having an analytical story about every painting I mean it's like when musicians are jamming yeah they are not thinking because spirit and cre the creative side of the brain comes from a space of no mind yeah. you know, and sometimes it's just the technical side of things in my opinion that same with music that one needs to um, actually think about sure. um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And, it, and getting back to that as well with the musicians it's like and it's the same with art you do something over and over and over and over again speaking for my myself anyway um, so that I can switch off so that I know it I know it back to front so that I can switch off and allow it to take over it's like musicians it's, it's like jamming they they know what to do they, they've been doing it for all their lives or whatever they're so it's a part of who they are and so they're able to switch off and their their hands or their voice or whatever it is uh, takes over and and that's that's where the magic is. That's yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. But, um, and do you see art as a possible vehicle for change? I do. I do. Um, whilst I don't necessarily see it as something that is happening. I, I see it as having the potential to change. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting as well because my personal opinion anyway of what I've experienced over 20 odd years of, of painting in Australia is there's not 
Australians, by and large, don't, I've found anyway, don't seem to really um, consider art as a serious occupation or something worthy of um, dedicating your life to, you know. Um, this, I sort of grew up that way anyway, it's from a parental kind of a thing as well. Like, but, but, um, but, but, sport, like, but sport is definitely worth it. Oh. Absolutely. You're playing footy, you're, you're doing well, you know. <laughs> you're winning. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know, maybe that's just my experience, but certainly it's... it's um, yeah, I sometimes really lament that, that it's just really not taken so seriously in this country. You know? um, whereas other countries, it's it's taken much more seriously. You know? um, and I suppose it's also que also the question of what type of work gets revered. You know, yeah. I mean, that's a strange one. You know, that's a strange one. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that's why we're doing these shows. You know, to try and yeah, bring right. people's awareness yeah. to yeah. different types, different types of art. Um, and, and and tell me, Jason, um, what does your work practice look like, and how do you more or less um, go about starting a new piece of work? Yeah, and it's basically for me, it's just having a starting point. Once I, I can. Um, I sometimes find it really difficult to start, you know? It's like when I've put so much work into something and I've finished it and then there's, I'm presented with a blank canvas and it's like, start again. It's like, oh, wow. Okay. I can be um, very critical of what I do and my work and, um, yeah, 80% of the time it's like, yeah, I'm not really... I'm not really loving what I do, you know, it's like, and so sometimes I can be quite despondent about starting a piece, and so there will be a different approach to start it sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll start with, sometimes I'll start with a drawing, and other times I'll start just with colour, and just playing with colour and throwing a bit of colour around will um, push me into a certain direct direction, you know, it's like a... Every, everything, every process, every sort of um, step is like a springboard. I don't know, I always view things as springboards. It's like, because I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing, but by making this step, that will then show me where to go next, and then that next step will show me the next step after that. And, and that's kind of how I work. I don't, it's A, B, C, I don't go A, and then, yeah, I want to get to E down there. It's like, oh, I'm not sure even if E exists, but... If I start at A, then, you know, generally speaking, I always go through the alphabet, but, you know, it's never guaranteed. I, I um, Yeah, it's just that springboard process. And and do you um, sometimes get artists block? Definitely. Definitely. Um, in fact, a number of years ago, I actually, I actually stopped painting. I'd, I'd had enough of it. It was not fun for me anymore. And so that's when I started to... I'd always played with sculpture and toyed around with it. But um, I actually made a decision. So I, I just don't want to paint at the moment. I was just over it. And uh, and so I started to carve quite seriously. And, um, and I just absolutely fell in love with carving and, and started to take it very seriously. And... Um, and it was kind of like uh, kind of like a savior for me because now when I have a block, a, a, bl uh, a block like a two-dimensional block with a drawing or painting or something like that, I jump to carving, and um, I seem to feel like for me I have a battery inside of me, and when that battery to do with painting or drawing, two-dimensional work becomes run down or depleted, then I jump to the carving battery and. And it's all fully charged up and ready to go, and and I'll um, I'll work in that medium, in that area until until it starts to wane, and I can sort of feel. And by that point, 
that the battery for painting is charged and I can feel it pulling at me and it's like, ah, oh, no, and I'm wanting to get back to it and jump back into it, you know. But um, that's how I sort of get around those blocks and um, navigate that stale energy that tends to, for me, um, come about, you know. Sometimes I just can't find my way through something and so I just jump ship and work in another completely different medium completely different way just, just to get a change of paradigm that's actually yeah. very encouraging um jason you know because they people always see these artists doing this beautiful work and thinking you know they don't f ha f have difficulties or find it difficult or the inspiration never stops flowing or you know what i mean and we we, we all do go through those patches yeah, i don't know of anybody personally that, that doesn't you know and I think it's necessary. It makes know, you stronger. All, yeah, and if it's all just coming through that easily, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, you know, for some extremely you know, gifted individuals, you know, I work really hard at, at what I do and, and have always done. And, and it doesn't always come easy. Some things do more easy than others, and other things are a challenge and a struggle, and we'll have literally be losing sleep and you know trying to pull your hair out it's very frustrating sometimes i think it's a big misconception i think a lot of people because they do they just see the the finished piece that's and so go, true wow you know wow you just sat and did that and it's like they don't see everything that's behind it they don't see or, or feel what you go through to create it it's like yeah i think i really think that a lot of people have this idea of it's just so fun and it's just, oh, you just paint every day and it's just joy and you're just in la-la land making these pictures and, and the reality for me anyway is actually quite the opposite, you know. Sometimes I find them very frustrating, you know. It, that's that's just me. But, um, yeah, because I carry it with me. If something's not working, I don't lock it away in a room and forget about it and go on about my life. It's just the way I am. It's my makeup. I carry it around in the world and I'm thinking like, oh, how, how am I going to resolve this? How am I going to get through to the other side of that piece? Am I going to or is it just, is it sort of a dead end? You know? And generally, luckily enough, you know, it, they do work out, but um, sometimes it doesn't feel that way and it's, it's hard. You know? Yeah, because yeah, uh, at least 50% of my paintings go through a stage where they do not work and yeah. I've always got to remember that I all usually go through that stage and I've got to pull the painting through the other side and try and resolve it you know um, so it's not all as you say la la land um, yeah. yeah so Jason um, what does your subject matter generally consist of and does it change from painting to painting Sort of my subject matter is, um, I love the idea of, I mean, I, I sort of am obsessed with this idea that we're not, we appear and present as solid matter, but in fact we are not. And, um, and so I guess I try and uh, explain that visually by making things that we see from day-to-day -day life as solid and hard to being sort of transparent or semi-transparent. Um, I've always been interested in apparitions and um, and I sort of feel that there that it's another aspect of, of these things, these things that are going on around us all the time now, right now, you know, there's a whole other world of worlds going on around us and and um, sometimes you get a little glimpse into that and you can feel that there are other people, other things going on around you and around where you live and, and around animals. This is where animals are amazing. They're much more tuned in than we are generally to those kinds of things. And, um, and I think that's why I also include animals in work and animals have been, they're like our allies. They're our familiars and have been 
for a long, 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 long time. It's not a new thing. It's a very ancient thing. Um, because we share this journey with them. Life is, is not just for the humans, it's for everything that's sharing this journey. And so, you know, in terms of themes in my work, I guess that's really what I'm trying to show is that we're all bits and pieces of each other and we're all connected and we're all holding hands and informing each other by our actions and interactions. And, um, and for me, that's what makes life full. Um, so, Jason, what does art mean to you? Um, art for me, I touched on it a little bit earlier as well. Art has been really important for me. Um, yeah, as I said, I, I was sort of a really quiet kid and kind of was quite a shy kid, you know, I was not uh, outwardly um, vocal or I was just quiet and um, I always had a, a lot going on, and, you know, and a lot of people I think were not aware of. There was so much going on, perhaps, because I was. Um, we live in a world where you've got to sort of scream and dance about and to get noticed, you know. And um, so, art for me was a way of finding my place. Finding, I always sort of felt like I didn't fit or didn't really belong here. I always felt like um, the old one out kind of thing, or the proverbial mm, round peg in a square hole it just didn't fit and I you know I, I still have that I still experience that but I learn a little bit more to navigate it a bit better these days but um you know my early life was devoid of art I didn't um I wasn't a sort of child that took to it young and you know, I um, I started art through graffiti and um painting on trains and running around and getting into trouble and doing things like that. And, and um, Yeah, it was kind of a rebellious act. It was kind of, you know, but, um, but I fell in love with it and I, I, was, I never really had much concentration. And so um, all of a sudden I was able to concentrate and I would disappear and I could be drawing for hours and hours and hours and I could just lose myself into this world that I, I just came to fall in love with. I just, I found my, my voice. I found my, seemingly my purpose. Um, everything seemed to make sense for me when I was left to my own devices and I could just sit and draw. And um, so art for me, from those um, early beginnings, is, is actually really, really big for me. You know, it's really, it's really big for me to be able to um, find an outlet, to find a voice, and uh, to find something that that I loved, that I could give myself to. Because up until that point, I hadn't, you know, I'd hear people talk about careers and this and that. And like, oh, it's nothing really turns me on. There's nothing that I really want to do, you know, when I was younger. And then, um, yeah, in high school started to do that. And then the first artist that I ever came into contact with um, was an Australian artist, a brilliant, brilliant artist. The name's of James Gleason. And, um, and I'd never heard of oil paint. I didn't know what it was, but I'd seen this enormous painting by him and read the little card that said James Gleason oil on canvas and from that moment on I was like obsessed with oil paint. What is this stuff? You know, I played with oil pastels and coloured pencils and Posca pens and things like that, but I was like mystified by this oil paint. I, I couldn't understand it. And um, I asked my art teacher, could I use it? Could I can I use oil paint? And no, I wasn't allowed. So um, yeah, it wasn't until I left school and went and bought my first little box of oil paints and, and that was that, that was the end. Literally overnight, my my vision of myself and my life 
was also good. Um, well, Jason, that was absolutely mind-blowingly next level. So uh, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thanks, Bonnie, very much. It was, it was really nice to talk to you and to share a bit about my methods and my work. And yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>